and playing against this kind of opposition. It's a chance for him to make a further impact. And he's up against a very experienced opponent in Alex Kazakis. But first match for both of them. Carl Boys alongside me. Carl, have you recovered from last night yet? Yeah, it was exciting, wasn't it? And Gomez as well. He'll be back next on table one and he'll be fighting some demons after his his mistake because he could well have been through to Monday's finals day. Casper. I'm looking forward to see Casper play. Not seen much of him in the match room table arena so I'm sure he's feeling a little bit edgy yeah it's a big day for him he's not used to playing on television Alex Kazakis on the other hand is very well accustomed to it but Matikainen starts us off Well, that was a pretty decent break. Quite powerful, and well, look at the split he's got here. This is this is just the start you'd like. Well, we've seen it a number of times over the last few days. Players coming in fresh, itching to get started, and have been very fast out of the blocks. We saw it with Oi a couple of days ago. We saw it with Gomez yesterday. Oh dear, but what a way to follow such a good break. Well, that is a worrying sign because the balls there were just so absolutely perfect. You you couldn't put them better with your hand and, you know, you'd, you'd pay big money for a split like that, especially in your first ever rag. Alex Kazakis, former world number one. He's no stranger to these arenas. So he's picked up a lot of experience over the years. So now Casper, well, big problems here now. Just needs to try and get the hit. Yeah, the other side of it is that we've seen players in who wouldn't be used to being in this sort of situation. And if they get off to a bad start, they really struggle to settle. So whatever Matakainen does in this match, because he's inexperienced and unfamiliar, could really set the tone for much of his day. Yeah, so the one ball was quite a big target, so I expected him to hit that. And as you can see, he's left this one ball on, and Alex will know how important this is now, especially after the mistake from Casper. Over on table two, Mark Bosch he's playing Billy Thorpe. He leads that match. One rack to zero. Yeah, they're the two players who survived into this group from yesterday, or two of the players. Thorpe's day didn't start well, but got better. Beister Bosch generally struggled, but did just enough to survive. So Kazakis is at the table, and this is, well, kind of where Casper should have been, to be brutally honest. Well, this is going to hurt so much more than if it had been Kazakis just coming to the table, breaking and running. There would have been nothing that Matakainen could have done about it. But the margins in these race to five matches are so small. And a miss like the one Matakainen had. It's the sort of thing you can end up looking back on at the end of it and say that was the key moment, even though it was so early on. Anywhere in the middle of the table, the cue ball will be fine for Alex. Yeah, this looks okay. Anywhere but straight. So he's got a nice angle to get back out for the eight ball. Been around a long time now, that's Kazakis, and he's really 
he's improved over the last few years and you know just before lockdown and covid he was without doubt one of the top three players in europe still needs that big big tournament win but he has been knocking on the door getting to semi-finals and finals of the world pool masters and that was heartache for Alex, losing out to David Alcade in a, an absolute classic. Well, this is a horrible start for the debutant, Matty Kynan. Missed a simple ball. Kazakis took the opportunity to put him in all sorts of trouble. And from that, the Greek star got the chance. From which he has taken the opening rack. Now, Carl. Trivia time for you. I'm uh -oh. going to ask you what age you think Alex Kazakis is. Well, that's I've, I've got a rough idea, so you've let me off there. I think he's late 20s still. Yeah, very late 20s, actually. So late, in fact, he's going to be 30 this summer. But it almost feels like he should be older because he feels like one of those players who's been around a long time. And I think I'd categorise him as someone who's maybe just below the very highest level. And just one really big tournament win might be the difference for him. Yeah, and there we see Casper. It's only the first rack, and, well, he looks a little bit uncomfortable to me there, Michael. He's doing his Alban Ocean impression. <laughs> You're a naughty man. Yeah, it is a horrible start. There's no getting away from that, but he's got to remember. This is a long day. He's going to have at least six matches. We have seen players turn it around after bad starts. But Kazakis, 1-0 up, and he'll have the break in the second. Mark Beisterbosch is certainly off to a flying start on the other table. Looking very good. 2-0 up already against Billy Thorpe. He's just knocked in a good two ball in the third rack. So a chance to take a very firm grip on that match. Our referee, Viv... Let's go, making sure the balls are touching. And the reason for this is because if you just throw the balls up and kind of take the triangle off and the balls can sometimes move about and leave gaps and that would result in when the player breaks off, well, the balls just don't split. So this is why the referees do, you know, they, they take a bit of time and they get a bit of stick as well. If they're not speeding up and you give me a bad rack if the player doesn't make a ball, they sort of look at the referee. Yeah, it's a no-win situation for the refs. The players seem to want the balls racked very quickly and perfectly, and often those two things don't come together. 1-0 to Kazakis. Yeah, and that was Kazakis' first break of the event, and it looked good. Straight down the middle, controlled the cue ball well, and this is the thing with pool. When you make a little mistake like Casper, and you go on to lose the rack, and then you don't have the break in the next rack, because Akis has got a chance to, you know, put a break and run on him, and, well, he'll be sat there 2-0 down. So this is big moments now, because Akis will know this. Well, it's like the tennis term, endorsing the break of serve, that you break the other guy's serve, but then... In order to really make that count, you have to back it up by holding your own service game. So it's a very similar principle, really. I'm just wondering if he's going to travel all the way up and down, or can he hold the cue ball? Well, he tried to bump the eight, and, well, he's made a bit of a mess of this shot. So an interesting start. Both players had open shots after the break, what looked like good opportunities, and both players missed the one ball. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think either player will want to mount that one ball on their mantelpiece when this is over. Bad misses from both. So Casper's back at the table. He's got a look at this one. And, well, they expect him to pop this. Come on. Getting on the two ball is, is going to be his main problem. But I think for Casper's sake, when you've missed... An easy one ball in the first rack. I think you should just put all your efforts into potting this and just kind of chance your arm a bit on the position. Mm. 
needs this to slow down. This could sneak in behind the purple five. And, well, it's all going wrong for Finland's Kasper Matakainen at the moment. He looked really nervous preparing for that shot. Yeah, if you've never played in one of these type of events and, you know, you're used to playing on European Tour and some of the other events which are behind closed doors and then you've got to come out and play in one of these events, it really tests your metal. But, well, he's good with a short cue, but he's going to be faced with, well, not a pretty shot. I don't even know if he can jump over this nine to, to hit the pink. Yeah, he might be thinking, can't catch a break here. Pulls out a good recovery, but still ends up behind the nine ball. But then you could say he shouldn't have put himself in that position in the first place. Yeah, I mean, the thing with the jump shot, there's a, there was a little bit of luck in the shot he was playing. It's not like a proper pool shot where, you know, you're in and you've completely hacked at the ball, let's say, and there you see. Didn't really have many options on this jump shot. He was probably playing a full table bank and... So Kazakis is back at the table and well this is this is a nice chance first shot. He could have a play this slow and play the purple down table or he'll probably play off two rails for the purple in the same pocket, which that's the shot he's played and this looks good. Hits the ball nice, does does Alex. Nice pace to his game. Doesn't, you know, hit the ball too hard in the pocket. Gives the pocket a chance. Key shot's going to be the eight ball to the nine in this rack. So Kasper Matakainen must be sitting there reflecting that he could very easily have been 2-0 up. It's been a pretty horrible start for him. Some bad luck, but you have to say some bad shots as well. He's in a tough school here, and he's going to have to raise his game. Kazakis has just left himself a little tricky one. If he's straight on the nine, it's unmissable. Now he's going to be thinking, well, this is a little tester. Off the rail, got to stay still. And, well, he's been known to jump about on the shot. Nicely done. Kazakis could have been 2-0 down, you know. Instead, he's leading by two racks to nil. One of the great things in this game, Carl, is the names of some of the events. Have you heard of the Great Dismal Swamp Classic? Yeah, it's yeah. some kind of American event over over there. Well, that was one of the first events where Kazak has made an impact. Finished fourth in it back in 2015. He was runner-up at the Treviso Open on the Euro Tour the same year. Lost to Mark Gray. And then made another big step forward the following year when he won the Kremlin Cup 10-ball event, pulling away to beat Torsten Homan in the final. And really since then... He's been in that situation, hasn't he, that he's just looking for one or two big results to see him into that very top bracket. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know, Fedor burst onto the scene and he managed to win the World Nine Ball Championships and that kind of sets you up for your career. I won a world title when I was very young and the heat is off you. No matter what you then go on to do, you could miss a thousand balls, but you've always got that big major next to your name and unfortunately for Gazakis, he's had a lot of heartache. He lost in the semi-finals to Joshua Filler, the year Filler won the World Nine Ball and he had a golden opportunity to get to the final. He actually missed um, an open table and then he missed an opportunity to beat David Alcade. All the balls were sat there. We've all seen it. So now in his own mind, he's got to overcome that, and it isn't easy. But he's a class act, works out at his game, and they do say, if you keep knocking, the door will open. Yeah, like we say, even though he's been around a while, still only 29, and in pool terms, that gives him loads of time 
It's a great time to be that sort of age in pool as a leading player because more and more opportunity opening up. Yes, it's all been thrown off track a bit by COVID, like pretty much everything else, but hopefully that will all turn around in the near future. And even this year, very big schedule of events planned, much more than last year. Kasper Matikainen really wants to be part of all that, but it's not a promising start for him. He's really struggled early on. He has the break, though, in rack three. Yeah, for Kasper's sake, he could do with a real nice, easy layout here. Just to steady the ship, he's made a couple of silly errors and cue balls going close. And this is often what it can happen, this, you know. You get your chance. You don't run the table. You lose the next rack and you don't, or, you know, you're not going to keep getting them easy splits, Michael. And now he's got a safety shot. It's such an exacting game in that sense, isn't it, Carl? Because actually, there aren't many balls missed, certainly not many balls missed that should be potted, to the extent that even if you have one of those, it can throw you for the whole match. Yeah, I was going to speak about something like this today, actually, and come, it's an interesting one, because what people don't realise about pool is it's a very unusual game to play at the highest level, because if you play, let's say you play snooker, or you play darts, you play golf, you actually always get a shot, don't you? You genuinely get a shot. In pool, you might get the break, but you don't know what shot you're going to get after it. So if you're playing darts, well, you stand at the hockey, you throw at the dartboard, you play golf, you stick the ball in the ground. You, you've got your own sort of, your own go, haven't you? It's your own shot. In pool, it, it's a surreal feeling when you get that chance to win a match or a tournament, because in... In your mind, you actually start thinking, oh, I've got my chance to win here, because sometimes you don't get that chance, so it's a weird thing going on in your brain, and they do say this game is played between the ears. And Well, people look at the big pockets, don't they? And this is a point you often make, and they think, oh, it's so easy. In a way, that's what actually makes it so hard, because you have to be so close to perfection. Any little imperfection can cost you the whole match, and that's what makes it tough. Yeah, and you get faced with shots like this. That was perfect timing, Michael. This, you know, playing this up the rail, it's just not an easy shot at all. It might look easy. It might not hit it clean. It could fall in, but it's just not an easy shot because of this reason. He's lost the cue ball. People don't realise how fast the table is. So you've almost got to slow roll it, but the angle's too big. You get faced with a lot of horror shots in pool. That is for sure. But people think that's an easy shot because at this level, that's a 90 to 95% shot at least to make the pot. But again, as you say, he's done that. But the real battle is to try to keep the cue ball, and he hasn't. Yeah, now he's faced with a jump shot. Not easy. It wasn't a million miles away. That was a good effort. Just hit it a little bit too thin. And now here's a perfect example, Michael. Look at the shot Casper's faced with. Kazakis has missed his jump shot, and now Kasper's got to try and do something here. And he, this is just a horrible shot he's faced with. It's not easy to play safe. He can't bank the ball because obviously there's two balls Central in the way. Ball. And to pop this up the rail, it's so thin. It, you know, you you could have five goals at this and hit the rail first, or hit it really thick, and then everyone's going, "Oh, he's a rubbish pool player, this guy." But you just, you don't understand how tough this shot is. He's got with this absolutely perfect. And he's feeling the motions because he's he's had a couple of golden chances in the first two racks. So, big shot. Well, I don't think he's played this. I think he's tried to get the cue ball kind of where it is now. And hopefully the red would hit one of them two balls and stay there. As it is, he's fluked the red, but... Now he's got to play thin off this. And his line was all wrong. And this is it's a snowball effect, Michael. It can it's it's an interesting game pool at the highest of levels, I'll tell you. You've got to be a little bit mental to play it, that's that's a cert. Well, you had loads of success, so that backs that up. <laughs> well, there's nobody more mental than me, so... <laughs> My point entirely, Carl. <laughs> so he's got a chance of a bank. Does he want to risk it? If he doesn't, he'll try and get in, in behind the eight. 
So he's played the bank and it's in the centre, so it's a lovely shot. It's funny now, any time we see someone play a shot like that, we think David Alcady in the World <laughs> Masters final against Alex Kazakis. Yeah, maybe we should start calling it, he's got a David Alcady. Yeah, it could be like the, uh, the Penenka penalty in football. Now he's got a long shot here, you've got to stay still. Any little bit of side on this, you could miss the six ball by a week. Job done, now he's in prime position. He got a feel for Kasper Matakain in a bit. I think as pool fans, we want to see someone in this situation making this step up, playing in a big televised event like this, doing well and settling in. We don't like to see him feeling uncomfortable in this way. No, and, you know, I know, it, let's say if this was the World Pool Masters and he was playing Kazakis, obviously still in this match. This is just all hypothetical, of course, but he, he could lose and he's out of the event. The beauty of the Predator Championship League pool, he's going to have more matches. A horrible start, it has to be said, for Kasper Matikainen. And Alex Kazakis, though, very happy with how it's proceeding so far. He leads 3-0. Guaranteed that shot will appear on plenty of highlight reels. Whoa, did he split the wicket? What a beautiful shot that was! What a beautiful execution! Look at this! Oh my gosh! Sometimes it's best if you get up to the table just to hit the ball. This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Day six in Milton Keynes, a big day for Kasper Matakainen, but so far a day to forget. He's having a bit of a shocker here, to be fair, and he's 3-0 down against Alex Kazakis, the very experienced player from Greece, who will have the break in rack four. Back number four, Alex to break. Back number four, Alex to break. Over on table two, Matt Bajstabosh, he's playing Billy Thorpe. That match is 3-3. Three, three. 
Mark had a 3-0 lead in that match, so Billy's, well, he's done what he's been doing all week, grinding away. Yeah, Thorpe turned around his day pretty well yesterday. He had only won one of his first four, but then won the last two to get through to the semis and got within one rack of the group final. So this looks a pretty successful break and it looks like he's going to have a shot. All depends on what angle he's got on this one, if he can get easy position for the blue two. The blue two does pass the nine ball in this corner, so that's good news for Kazakas fans. There's still some way to go, but Obviously, if Matakainen was to start with a heavy defeat, say, worst-case scenario, 5-0, will you compare that to Billy Thorpe? He came in for his first match on Wednesday and lost 5-0 to Darren Appleton. But that's a totally different situation because Thorpe's got the experience. It's not such a big deal for him. He can turn it round after that. For Matakainen, it's a whole new level here and could be at least a short-term scar if he gets a real hammering in this. Yeah, and it doesn't get any easier because his next match after this is Albion Ocean. Albion Ocean, he's still here on day six. I'm sure we'll talk more about this as the day unfolds. You've got a feel for the guy. I think he's getting his post delivered to Milton Keynes at this stage. He's been here so long. <laughs> nice shot there from Kazakis. Plays it off the two rails into a nice position eight ball is sat well that's just a dream position for a pool player whenever you see it there you can just play a little stop shot guaranteed position on the nine the worst place where the eight ball often causes the player problems is, is when it's up table so around where the brown seven is now because you've always got to try and get the cue ball back for the nine and this is the thing isn't it matakainen will have been sitting there during the break for a couple of minutes Surely trying to talk himself into improving and thinking, OK, really got to try to dig in here. And yet, he's probably going to find himself even further behind now without having been able to do anything about it in the meantime because he's just not got to the table. Yeah, and that touches on to what I was kind of trying to get to before where it's a really strange feeling a pool player has. A, you know, when you, when you have that golden chance like Gomez last night, you know, Gomez should have won the group. He had three balls left. And... He didn't pot the balls. If he potted the balls, he's through. He's got a day off today. He's in the final group. Now, he's got to come back and do it all over again. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if there's a bit of a hangover from what happened last night for Gomez when he's next up on this table against Mieszko Fortunski. You get the feeling they might not be waiting very long to come to the table because Kazakis is about to go to the hill here. Mark Beisterbosch is on the hill already on the other table. They're zipping along there. He's 4-3 up against Billy Thorpe. Thorpe at the table, though, in rack eight. We had so many hill-hill finishes yesterday. We could be about to see one very early on, on day six, over on table two. Not looking likely here, though, because this is the Alex Kazakis show. And he leads Kasper Matikainen by four racks Alex to nil. Kazakis. It's cruel, isn't it? Carl, because only yesterday Matakainen would have been on such a high, news coming through that he's in the Finland team for the World Cup, and he'll have looked at this as a chance, apart from obviously the sake of this event in itself, to warm himself up for that big, big challenge of the World Cup, playing le players of the sort of level who he'll face in that, and he's going to have to do a lot better than this, or he's going to go into that event on a bit of a low. Yeah, it's another good point you've made there, Michael, because he can use this, as you said. You know, he's got five more matches after this. It's not all doom and gloom. And just gives him a little taste of, you know, the things to come because, well, he's really going to feel the pressure in the World Cup of Pool. So this is a good, good starting ground. It's actually a really good point you made there. Well spotted. There's Kazakis, colourful character from Greece. Yeah, it's great for him because he's going to feel he's almost been handed a win to start here. But let's not write Matakainen off just yet. He's got the break. And just as one bad shot can affect you for the whole match, 
as we're seeing so far from him so one good rack can turn it all back round again but he's got to make this count it's amazing though cash your mind back to the very first rack casper breaks off and literally the balls go where you would put them with your hand and he misses the opening shot and how, how different a story could be no shot on the one ball don't think it passes the green six so he's going to be playing safe that was a look at the outside of the venue there stadium mk it's a football match on this afternoon actually they're playing doncaster and it goes from bad to worse cue ball nowhere near the six the one ball has bounced out into the middle I mean, it's not an easy shot, but he should be getting the hook there now. Kazakis has got, well, he's got options. If he can see both sides of the ball, he's got a real easy safety. If he can see it fully, he can get the cue ball in behind the red three. Well, this is it. Look at this. Well, this is a match Casper will want to forget about. Billy Thorpe's about to tie the match up. We're no stranger to Hill Hill matches. That one's going Hill Hill over on table two. Yeah, half the matches yesterday went the full distance. He'll be feeling good today, Thorpe, actually. He was telling me yesterday when he came in for a stint in the commentary box that physically he was feeling better. He'd been struggling a little bit with his health. Not in any serious way, of course, earlier on in the week, but he was feeling better yesterday and played some good stuff towards the end of the day, actually. That was a nice kick shot there from Casper. That keeps him alive in this rack. It's a big one for him, isn't it? Unlikely, obviously, to win the match now. But just don't get beaten 5-0. Just try and get one or two on the board. You can feel you're settled into the tournament and build from there. Now, does this one ball pass the eight ball into the side? Well, it might not be a good thing winning 5-0, because if you remember, Darren Appleton won 5-0 against Billy Thorpe, and, well, he ended up finishing last in that group. Yeah, it was the only match he won. So he played it off the eight. That was a nice shot. Now he's got another tricky little shot here because potting the ball won't cause him too many problems, but it's cue ball. That's where it's going to could pose some problems. So let's see what he does. Look at this. He's flicked the four. Then the cue ball has hit the seven half ball and landed on the top rail. So now he's queuing off the rail, full length. It never comes easy when you most need it to. Dungeon call. I don't know why that is. It makes no sense logically. But you can't deny it just seems to happen. Yeah, and I think the problem with this is if he rolls it through, he can't stay on the pink four in the left centre. So he might have to play it into the top left pocket. Oh, he's played it with power, and the problem is he's not given the pocket enough chance, showing inexperience there, I'm afraid. Yeah, and also you use the word problem there, and that's the thing, isn't it? All he can see now are problems, and it all goes back to that one ball in the very first rack. If he'd have played that slower where he hit, because he didn't miss it by much, it would the pocket would have swallowed it up. But because he didn't want to be faced with a, a long four ball, well, he's made his previous shot a lot harder. And this is a nice shot. Full length table draw. Needs it to slow down, though. Now he's going to have to travel down the table and back up for the six. It's probably Matikainen's last hope, though, because if this shot goes to plan, then it's fairly straightforward for a 5-0 win for Kazakis. Well, 
Well, he didn't play behind the six, but he's had an absolute roll of the year there. Not a big deal. He's 4 zero up. Even if he'd have bumped the six, he'd have probably been on it, but you see he um, held his hand up. Oh, sw swapping over, Michael. Exhibition pull from the Greek. Well, that's not going to make Matikainen feel any better. He struggled with his main hand. Kazakis is switching over and still potting the balls. A little bit of work to do here, though. Two shots he can play here. He can draw it back over to where he's kind of walked round to. And if he's feeling a bit, well, a little bit fancy, he can spin it in with loads of left. That's a bit more of a Friday night show-off shot, though. So I do expect him to draw it back. Likes to draw the cue ball back, does Kazakis. Looks to be over now, and it's pretty much over on the other table. Billy Thorpe has a straightforward nine ball. He's turned it around after a bad start against Mark Beisterbosch. Billy Thorpe wins his opening match by five racks to four against the Dutchman. Yeah, and Kazakis has got these two balls to record a nice win, even though... You've got all the experience in the world. He will still be delighted to get this win on the board. Bit of a horror show for Kasper Matikainen of Finland. Alex Kazakis exploited his weaknesses to the full, and he's off to a flying start, winning by five racks to nil. Next up... On the main table, Mieszko Fortunski against Roberto Gomez. And Jasmine Ocean will be joining me in the commentary box for that.